Erythropoietin 2. Erythropoietin, EPO, is a protein synthesized in the kidneys which is involved in red blood cell production. Some individuals with kidney disease have low red blood cell counts and can be treated with EPO. EPO can be produced by recombinant DNA technology in which the human EPO gene was inserted into a specially prepared bacterial plasmid. The diagram below shows the prepared bacterial pl plasmid before and after it was modified by the insertion of a human EPO gene. Okay, so we've got the before modification and after. Um, we've got basically this is the point at which we've had something inserted because there's the EPO gene. So we still have an antibiotic resistance gene and we have the origin of replication. Explain the importance of removing the EPO gene from a human chromosome with the same restriction endonuclease than was used to open the bacterial plasmid. Okay, they've given you two lines here, but really um, you could get it from literally just saying the same sticky ends. Because what you must have, if I'm going to seal two things together, so when you were like doing this kind of genetic engineering stuff in that five, we, we, we would say stuff like, we'd say, here's your plasmid that you've cut open, and here's your gene that you've gone and got from somewhere else, and here is your modified plasmid, which you're going to insert. Now, that's fine. It's, it's not bad. It makes perfect sense, really but you need to know it in more detail. And you know that this line that you're drawn here is actually the double strand of DNA. So what you've actually got is a plasmid that is double stranded. And when you cut it, I'm just trying to get this to be a reasonable line here. Okay, when you cut it with a, with a restriction endonuclease, the double strand ends up longer on one side and shorter on the other. And what you've got in, the, in those little bits here are sticky ends. That's the complementary sequence that's been created by the restriction endonuclease cutting asymmetrically. Okay, now that sequence, if I'm going to stick something into it on my gene, has to be the same. So I need to have, when this one comes in, I need it to be longer on this side, shorter on this side, and longer on that side. And I need that sequence there to be the same as the blue ones on the other side. Okay, so that that will lock in. So you need to literally get away with just saying same sticky ends. If you want to be more precise about it, especially if you're using this as a revision thing, then what you're saying is that you've got the same complementary sequence on either side so that they can stick in. Using the word sticky again, but yeah, okay, that's it. Name the enzyme used to seal the EPO gene into the bacterial plasmid. Bit of a gift, ligase, okay. It's the only one you know that sticks DNA together. Modified plasmids were mixed with bacteria. Some bacterial cells were transformed by taking up the modified plasmid, but others were not. Use information from the diagram to suggest how a culture containing only the transformed bacteria was obtained. Okay, it's to do with this antibiotic resistance gene. So if you had, say, a thousand bacteria and you threw in a thousand modified plasmids, the likelihood of every bacteria taking up a plasmid is not 100%. So let's say that you, you threw in your plasmids, but only 700 of them took it up. That would actually be an amazing percentage, but we'll go with that. Okay, so you've got you know, 700 that now have the plasmid, and you've got 300 that don't. But what that means is you have 700 which have an antibiotic resistance gene. So if I now dump antibiotic res that antibiotic that is resistant to into the culture, the ones with the plasmid survive, and the ones without it die. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to add antibiotic to the culture and only transformed will survive. Okay, it's your selection marker that you're using there. Identify the section of the modified plasmid which ensures that it could be copied and passed on to daughter cells when transformed bacteria divided. Now, it's a long way around to say it, but what we're, see what we're looking for here is the origin of replication. Okay, let me just do a little scoot to the side so I can make sure we're happy with that one. Okay, so what we're seeing there is... Oh, didn't want that to come up. Okay, so what we're seeing is if you've got your bacteria... And inside the bacteria, you've obviously got your chromosome, but we're not really worried about the chromosome. What we're saying is uh, we've put, managed to put the plasmid in. Okay, now if that bacteria now divides, then what you would get is 
by asexual reproduction, obviously, so we just get two identical copies of the parent cell. And so we've got our chromosome and our chromosome, but we only had one plasmid. So basically only one of the daughter cells will get the plasmid. So this one doesn't. So if I'm trying to increase the number that have the plasmid, it doesn't work. I only get the same number that I originally managed to transform. However, if I've got an origin of replication, then as soon as it gets into the first bacteria, it will divide and produce some more plasmids inside it. So that means each of the daughters then get, you know, at least one or two of the of the plasmids. And when they divide, they'll have made some more, so they also can pass them on. Okay, that's why we need to have it. Right, uh, suggest a reason why bacteria produce um, EPO protein, which is inactive. So I should have read that bit. The EPO protein produced by the transformed bacteria is inactive. Suggest a reason why. Okay, you just straight need to know this, okay? Um, our problem is that we have put a eukaryote protein into a prokaryote cell, okay? And what that means is that we don't have exactly the same apparatus when it comes to our kind of final end of translation. So what we have is um, incorrect folding. You will see in the MART scheme that it will mention post-translational modification. That is no longer part of the course content, so do not worry about it. But incorrect folding you need to know, okay? Suggest how recombinant DNA technology could be used to produce an active form of the EPO protein. Well, what we need to do is we need to put a eukaryote gene into a eukaryote cell. And so we're looking for a single cell which we can engineer muck about with plasmids that is a eukaryote so what we want to do is to put it into put it into yeast because it has plasmids and that's the question